Well, he is, and I think this is exactly where he dug out the piglets earlier, or that piglet that he got, and maybe there's more piglets inside that he knows are there, and that's why he's come to this area. You can see there's a lot of disturbed soil here. There's a big hole that goes into the ground, and I have a funny feeling that he knows there's more piglets around and that he might want more. I said that he might go after if, uh, the others if they are around, and, and I think he's trying to listen and look inside here and just see, can he hear movement? If he can hear movement, then you might find him going down and into that area to try and then dig and try and get towards these little baby warthogs again and try and pull out another one at the end of the day it's easy pickings for a male leopard if he can find them then he can get in there and he can get himself a really decent meal because sometimes there'll be litters inside there of five six seven piglets even up to eight and you'll find that that means that he can just literally one by one grab them and eight piglets actually becomes quite a decent meal you can see he's sniffing around a little bit i think maybe he's decided no not there there's another hole not too far from us that he's heading towards you can see his nose is on the ground he's sniffing so maybe he's trying to work out where did these warthogs go from this section try and pick up the scent of them again and then follow to wherever they may have run it also could be where he killed this piglet he might have killed it here and then dragged it all the way to where we were and there's just still the scent of those little ones in that area but he's definitely nose to the ground smelling i'm sure he wants to find the rest of them i'm pretty sure he knows there's more than just what he's currently eaten that there might be a few other piglets you can see he's just going down towards that hole which is right near where that car is so it is a very cool thing to be able to see that and those guests there are being absolutely spoiled you can imagine coming all the way to africa and then having a leopard that's a meter away from you is a very very special experience and there's very few places in the world that you can have something like that sabi sands has got to be one of the best for it there are other areas that are great with leopards and good leopard density but just the sheer kind of proximity and relaxed attitude of a lot of our leopards makes this one of the best leopard viewing areas in the world <laughs> You can see he's not quite sure he's kind of looking around and checking and sort of seeing where he can go in order to find his piglets he's sniffing also a lot of the trees which means i think he's picking up the scent of another leopard as well mr pimo certainly leopards would crawl into burrows or dens for um, warthogs i have seen anderson doing it i've seen tingana doing it i've seen mvula doing it they do it regularly and it is dangerous in that there could be an adult warthog sitting there with its tusks facing forward and they could get hurt mofufunyan once did it and he got his tusks from between his eyes over his head it gashed all the way over so it is dangerous work but it is something that can be done so Ah, there's a massive hole here that we don't want to go into. That's not going to be very good. Thank you, Noel, for pointing that out. So Noel just told me, she kind of gave me a little tap and told me that I'm going to disappear down an aardvark burrow. And no one wants to disappear down an aardvark burrow. It's not very good for Rusty. And I think Rusty has been abused enough by following wild dogs with Brent and myself in the recent years. So we won't abuse it more with an aardvark burrow. But like I was saying, it's very, you know, it's very dangerous for a leopard to go down, but they will do it. If they feel like they can get to that warthog, they most certainly will. And if they feel like there's no adults inside, then it's just piglets. Well, then they'll just dig and dig and dig and dig. And they'll actually use their paws to claw away soil to get to those and make space to be able to get into an area where they can potentially um, dig those little piglets out and, and pull them out so they most certainly will do it it's something that I've seen regularly from them um, and particularly male leopards female leopards they don't tend to do it they tend to be a little bit more shy of going into a burrow where there's warthogs they know warthogs can potentially be quite dangerous but male leopards have no such qualms about doing it he is absolutely gorgeous this male though he is an incredible looking individual he's got a bit of a dewlap it's not quite that big just yet but he really is a wonderful specimen of a leopard. Now, Mac, you're asking, is Quarantine's eyes blue? Well, they uh, blue is not really a, the word I would use for them. Uh, they've got a bluish tinge, but they are very, very light-colored. That's probably a better way to put it. So he's got very light-colored eyes, much like Mvula, much like Tumba. They've all got these lighter shades. And, I mean, some are a little bit more blue or green. So in his case, he's got a more blue tinge. Tumba's is a more green tinge. And Mvula, also more bluish coloration. And it's just the way things are with these guys. It's the, that lineage seems to have some reason the lighter color eye gene. But it's not, blue is not the, really the color I would call it. It's just 
very very light now is he gonna go up the mound for us and stop there if he does I'll be super happy because it will be absolutely beautiful for him to be up there hold on let's see there we go he is going up well done quarantine seems to like termite mounds a lot of the photographs I've seen of quarantine are up on a mound and it seems as though this is his favorite kind of place to hang out there we go no you don't go down stay there yes you're going to park yourself down that's absolutely perfect hello boy nice to meet you <laughs> how cool is this he really does look very 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 similar to Mvula in his younger days and some of the other offspring of that same mother down in the south of the Sabi Sands. He looks very similar to another male that we used to see down there. Um, I forget his name now actually, which is quite strange. I, I used to see him quite a lot and I really used to enjoy spending time with him, but I'm just trying to think what his name was. He was a little bit on the shy side, Mandlev, that was his name. So he used to have a, a leopard there called Mandlev and he used to have big ears, which is a trait of the Mvula bloodline. But that leopard mandlev and, and quarantine are very similar in a lot of ways he tends to have a little bit more of a longer muzzle than what the leopard down in the south had but still very very similar in a lot of respects you see now he's spotted something so he's definitely piqued up his interest maybe there's the warthogs are not too far away now and he's now seen where they are but his see look at that you see how he's just adjusting his sort of field of view moving his head and those incredible senses that he's got in the forms of his eyes and his ears are going to try and just work out what exactly is going on and where they're moving to and if he's spotted warthogs well i can tell you then he's going to probably start going after them he knows that they're around here it's just a matter of finding them and this is why termite mounds are the best thing for a leopard because they get a little bit higher it allows them to see over the grass and to be able to spot small things like warthogs in amongst these grassy areas where they can then focus on it and work out a way to go and stalk them so from here he'll be able to then work out right these warthogs are moving in a certain direction I need to loop around and use certain environmental conditions to help me with that the thing is about this morning is there's no real sun so he's not going to be able to use sun in a direction to try and kind of get him into place and to use the sun to his advantage also very little wind this morning so he's actually got kind of free reign as to move any side he wants so what he'll try and do more than anything else is focus on cover to be able to then find what he's looking for but you can see how he just moves and tries to tr kind of figure out exactly what's going on it might also not be um, warthogs it could also be steenbok or diker there's lots of them around as well in this area i've seen tundi make many a diker kill in this particular section that we're in so this is not something that i i mean that i would be surprised about if he did see those so we'll just have to wait and see he's definitely spotted something though you've just finished breakfast you can't have more typical male leopard once there's an opportunity they will then definitely take it Papa Dana, um, quarantine is a fair size bigger than yeah, Hosan. I mean, Hosan is getting there. He's by no means a small leopard and he will get bigger, but quarantine is definitely bigger. I mean, quarantine's got quite a few years on Hosanna and, and he's most certainly a bigger individual. But it's interesting with quarantine. It's a slightly different build than what you see from Hosan. It's quarantine has got that sort of stocky, quite short legs, quite bulky heads, long muzzle, a little bit of a different kind of look to what Fasana has. Fasana has a more sort of, it almost looks like he's got slightly longer legs and a much longer tail, funny enough. That's one thing about quarantine, is that his tail seems very short in comparison to Tumba's and to Hosanna's tail. His one seems to be a little bit on the shorter side, but maybe that's just because he's a little bit bigger and that's why it appears that way but other than that like i said the hosana just has a slightly different look about him more rounder face than what quarantine has got quarantine's got this much more kind of elongated muzzle and much more sort of lighter colored eyes obviously we see hosana's got those darker eyes but in size wise quarantine is definitely much bigger at this stage i think Hosanna is going to give him a run for his money though in terms of later in life. It'll be interesting to see Hosanna at five years. I reckon he'll be maybe the same size if not bigger than Quarantine will be. I would like to see Konyuma again. I, last time I saw Konyuma was quite some time ago and I would like to see Konyuma just to see if whether the two, because Konyuma is, is the direct brother of 
quarantine, they were litter mates. And so it would be interesting to see who's actually a little larger out of the two of them. When I last saw Kanuma, he was still a young individual, so it would be difficult to kind of base it on that. But it would be interesting to see, because I know he's now dominating down on Mala Mala and has become a fixture of that area. So it's going to be interesting to see. Veronica, yes, I have. I've been incredibly fortunate in that I have now seen every single one of Karula's offspring. So from the first one's Tandi Shadow to her next two, which was um, Shivinzi and Shivambalana, then she had Quarantine and Konyuma, and then um, Hosanna and Shongile. So that's all of them. I've been fortunate to have spent time with every single one. Konyuma I've only seen once, Quarantine only once, but the others I've seen quite a few times and spent a lot of time with all of them. So it's been an epic thing to see, especially from a female that has the legacy that Karula does. It's, it's, you know, she's a very special female leopard. She's probably one of the most successful female leopards that I know of, certainly. I mean, I've never seen a female leopard anywhere else in any of the areas of the Sabi Sands be as successful with raising cubs as she was and, and to dominate the way that she did and, and, and provide food. I mean, she only, as far as we know, lost one cub. And to do that in 12 years of being an adult leopard is, is really an absolutely insane feat. If you look at any of the other leopards around us, they have had no way had any such luck. I mean, and we're talking about in the same area. So Tandi has lost cubs. Shadow loses cubs. Salehesh lost quite a few cubs. Um, Moya has lost cubs. So um, Inkanyeni has lost. Beacon female before that. Um, who else? Shivinzi. Um, she obviously disappeared, so we don't know if she's had cubs. Um, I'm just trying to think. Who else? Shikavi in this west, she's lost. I mean, there's lots. There's all all over this area. They've all lost numbers of litters and, and whole litters, whereas, you know, Karula managed to kind of keep most of her cubs alive. And as far as we know, like I say, only one that she managed to lose in her entire life, which is an absolutely insane feat. And And the thing about it is we often talk about Shadow's kind of bad luck and, and the fact that she's had a lot of male leopards to deal with and a lot of other factors and she's been in a kind of bad place in comparison to Tandi and Karula but I mean Karula still had to deal with a lot I mean she still at the end of the day had to deal with hyenas to deal with the Nkuma pride the Majingalans I mean she lived through Majingalans, Matimbas, Mapojos she had to deal with all of those male lions so she had a lot of different threats to her sort of survival and the cub survival and the fact that she managed to raise all of these individuals is just a testament to why she became so well known and why she became such a legend i mean she's really was a phenomenal mother and and it's it's sad that i still feel like she she might have had one more litter in her at 12 years old you you do find females still denning so it's sad that she disappeared before giving that one last litter. And at least in, in the litter that she did leave us with, the last one, Hosanna and Shungile, have been two of the most entertaining leopards and two of the prettiest leopards that I've seen. They really are amazing. They are relaxed and they've provided us with hours and hours and hours of entertainment. And it's why, for me, I want Shungile to be around. I want Shungile to make an appearance because if she can continue that legacy, the males obviously are part of that legacy, but they, they're not going to continue it in, in that they can't have cubs of their own and so you know Tundi and Shadow yes they can continue it but they are at the end of the day much older individuals it just would have been so nice to have a young female at the age of Shongile or Shivinzi even if she was still still around to be able to stay in these areas and to have then kind of populated it more with cubs from that line so it's a bit of it's a bit sad that that Karula is no longer around and that you know Shongile has not really been seen Shivinzi same thing happened to her she just disappeared and so hopefully Shongile will come out soon and will end up being a leopard that we'll see in this general area. Right, while we watch Quarantine in his absolute beautiful state on top of this mound as he watches around, let's go back to my friend Scotty Dyson, who I think is still messing around with birds of a feather, and hopefully it will be entertaining. <laughs> 